Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be going over a little sketchbook tour of my Inktober sketches now that I'm done. But um, before I get started, I just was gonna let you know um, the materials that I used for Inktober this year. So this is my first Inktober and I decided to do it inside of this Pentallic. It's a, I don't know if you can see that, but it's a Pentallic Aqua Journal and it is the square size. It's a five and a half by five and a half inch um, square um, journal. And so that's what I used for all of Inktober. And then I used my 24 color palette, which um, I actually just put this palette together and I have a blog post for it. So um, I'll link that below um, and a video too. So I'll just link everything below so you can see all the colors in my 24 color palette, but that's what I used for all of Inktober. And then for my drawing tools, I would sketch everything first with a pencil. This one is a B, um, a B, uh, that's the hardness of the lead. So in case you were wondering, um, so that's the pencil. And then I would uh, go over it in a waterproof um, pen using um, this uh, car. It's called a, plat it's by Platinum carbon ink pen. Um, you can get it off Amazon, so I'll link everything below. And then I used this uh, travel brush. It's, um, I don't, there wasn't really a reason why I used this particular one, but it was gifted to me by a friend. And um, actually, she's the same one that gifted me um, this pen too. So I just used this um, just because, I mean, I guess I would travel with it um, if I was bringing my journal around. So I figured I'd practice with it but it is a size 12 it's not any particular brand so um, I'll link it I think in the um, description below in case you're curious I'll ask her where she got it I think it was off of Amazon and then I would erase my pencil lines obviously with a eraser all right so let's get started with the sketchbook tour all right, so I'm gonna take you through a tour of my sketchbook. I have never done this before, and this is going to be a flip through of my Inktober 2019 um, ink and watercolor sketches. So before I get started, I just wanted to share what um, sketchbook journal I'm using, and a lot of people ask me this, but so this is the Pentallic Aqua Journal. This is actually a version that was, I guess, manufactured incorrectly. I was sent this by my friend, and um, she had ordered a whole bunch of these for um, a project and um, the bindings actually glued and so the pages um, started falling out for her and um, they actually replaced all of them for her um, and to the ones that they were replaced, they were um, stitched and so the pages don't fall out. So I just wanted to let you know in case you see in here, I had added a couple of um, tape uh, pieces of tape so that the pages don't fall out. So in case you're wondering, that's what you're seeing here. But if you were to buy them, um, I think they've corrected it. So all of the bindings should be um, stitched bindings and not glued like this. So, all right. So again, this is the Pentallic Aqua Journal, five and a half by five and a half inch square. Um, and so I guess I'll just take you through. So this is the first year I did Inktober and I decided that I would try ink, um, basically like an ink sketch with a watercolor wash because I've never really done a lot of um, sketches like this and it seemed interesting um, and, and I wanted to try it. And um, it's just a different way of approaching watercolors because I felt like, you know, once I get the base sketch there, then I can just do a wash and it would go a lot more quickly um, for a daily project. So that's kind of where my mind was at when I was um, deciding to do this. So this was the first day and um, this is actually painted from a picture that I took when I was up in the Bay Area in Fremont. So it's a mission. And so that was the first thing I did. All right, and then the second second one, I started to use free reference photos. So they are royalty free for artists to use. And I'm part of a, a Facebook group. I joined a Facebook group that basically where photographers will provide um, reference photos that are free for artists to paint um, and interpret and use. And I thought that was really nice. So um, 
I really, I think this is one of my favorite ones from the whole series. And I really like how loose I kept it. Um, and I want to try and come back and keep doing sketches this way. But you'll see as I go how, how it kind of changed over time. But I was surprised pleasantly about how this second one turned out. And so this one is a lighthouse photo that I picked. Um, I actually like the amount of detail that I put in the lines um, and then how the wash is really basic. And this one, I actually, when I posted it to Instagram, I really didn't like it and everybody was really supportive and encouraging because um, I wasn't sure why I painted these windows in green. I just, I don't know, I didn't like how it turned out and it was one of those last minute decisions I did and um, you know, you can't erase it. So it just is what it is. Um, but this is when I started drawing, getting into more um, detailed urban scenes. So you can see these are a little bit more um, simple. And then, so this is my first take at it. And then this one is a barn and obviously, and um, what I like about this one is I didn't draw in the mountains in pen. I just went ahead and did watercolors over the pencil. And I kind of like the distance that it creates. Now this one was seemed really popular when I posted it to Instagram and I like it too. I think it's maybe the color um, and it was the first time I did um, a door close up and I really enjoyed uh, drawing in the details of the door here. So um, another thing I, I kind of liked that turned out here was the tiling on the floor. I just used brush strokes to, to um, convey a little bit of that pattern without really having to draw it out. And then this one, man, this one is something I've been wanting to do for a while and I actually wanna explore it more, but it takes a really long time in order to draw all the details when you have so many structures. And um, so I actually, I did my best. It doesn't, it didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted it to, but it was a really good learning experience. And then we've got this canal photo that actually was sent to me by my, to, sent to me by my mother-in-law um, who was in Portugal at the time um, with my father-in-law and so this is a Vero and um, I just really liked this canal look and I and I was um, playing around with how to do reflections and after this one I realized oh I should work a little bit on reflections and kind of see how to play with them and get them to look the way I want them to uh, in watercolor. So I went back to another door. I found this reference photo really interesting. It had um, vines. And so I um, played again with some of the flooring patterns by just using strokes. And um, I do feel like that's um, successful. It allows your mind to fill in the rest of the details. And then this is a stairway that I found really interesting. The thing that I wish I had done better for this one is uh, created more depth. So everything to me kind of feels like it's on the same plane, even though this is obviously way in the background. So I could have done a better job at that. Um, this is Mackinac Bridge and it was requested by um, one of my friends on Instagram and so I looked it up and I decided to give it a try um, and I really I think for this one I really like kind of how the clouds turned out around the bridge and so um, I thought that was successful for this. And this one is a uh, from a photo I took myself when we went to Budapest and um, it was during our honeymoon. And um, I wasn't quite sure how I was gonna do this water, but um, I kind of like how minimal it is. Um, and I do like the color that came out of it. And the thing is, is I discovered that in order to get the color of the water that I want, I had to buy a color. So it was cobalt blue turquoise light. And so, um, that is something that is interesting to me is I thought I could mix up basically any color and I probably could, but using that color, Cobalt Turquoise um, by Winsor Newton, uh, it just it just makes it so much easier. And um, this one is from Venice. It was a free reference photo. I've never been to Venice and I would love to visit one day. And you can see here, I started playing a little bit more um, with reflections in water. And I felt like for this one at least, um, 
it was more successful than the last one from Portugal. And um, again, I still feel like I could have done more detail, or not more detail, sorry, um, more like distance, like everything kind of looks like the same plane to me. So that's something that I really want to work on more. All right, and then here is, um, this is actually somewhere in the UK. I asked the photographer where it was taken and this one was done really, really quickly. And I think that there could have been more detail, but it was interesting drawing this type of structure and then adding little brush strokes for the roof tiles. All right, this one's from Scotland and it's a castle. I would love to visit. Um, when I posted this on Instagram, so many people said that Edinburgh was actually a really um, nice place to visit. This is not from Edinburgh, but um, I really uh, thought that I wanted to try again with distant mountains using just watercolor and not pen. Um, and again, I'm working on reflections here also. And I think that it's getting a little bit better. Okay, and then these two, I think this might be my favorite spread. And um, for this one, I, I don't know what it is with me and doors, but I've, I've got really into drawing old doors or doors in general. And um, I have to say the thing that I thought was successful about this one were um, the leaves where a lot of it's really abstract, but then I came in and added some small brush strokes that kind of fills in the details and then here where I only drew some of the brick with line work and then I used brush strokes to create the hint of other bricks on the wall and um, I liked how that turned out for this one and then for this one I think I just like the colors um, of fall and I thought what was interesting was I did two different uh, trees basically two different ways so this one I did the um, the trunks first and then I came back and I did the leaves which I don't like quite as much I like this one better where I was simultaneously painting trunks with the leaves so that everything kind of blended together more so hopefully you can see that and I and I thought that that was um, successful and this is something really really minor but here I started to play a little bit with shadows so I did really simple strokes here and then here on the ground just to uh, mimic the shadow that's in the reference photo. And so you'll see as I explore that more in the next ones, but um, here's another shadow line on this castle. And um, this one was one of those days where I didn't actually paint that night. And so the next day on the 19th, I did a two page spread to make up from the prior day. And um, what's interesting about sketchbooks also just to note is that there's a front and a back of the paper. And so the back of this is less textured than the front of this side. So you can kind of see the difference when you look up close. This is a lot smoother, this guy, and this one has a little bit more texture. So I actually prefer this side, but that's the thing that's really interesting about working in a sketchbook is that you kind of get different effects depending on what side of the paper you're painting on. All right, so then this one, I've always wanted to paint our house, the front of our house, and so I finally did. And Brandon um, is my son, and this is, uh, I just labeled it Brandon's first house because this is the first house he's lived in and we're going to be moving um, at the end of the year. And so um, I just wanted to document, wanted to document it. And so that was a fun little exercise to draw something that I'm so familiar with seeing every day. Um, and then I did some um, like grassy green forest. I, I don't know, I got into barns after that first barn. And so I wanted to try painting the barn wood without actually drawing it in ink lines. So this was also um, an experiment. And then this was another day where I didn't paint the night before, but I attended a conference over um, these uh, tips. Uh, October 21st to the 23rd. So the 22nd, I didn't really paint um, anything that night. So the next day I did another spread. And this is just um, the first, I think, interior um, interior painting I've ever done. And so um, it was inside a conference room with all these lights. And I thought it'd be interesting to try and interpret the light streaks that were all over the ceiling using watercolors. So um, that was interesting. And then you can kind of see the pages are starting to fall out, but 
Um, and then I did more doors. So this is actually a bunch of door panels leaning against a wall in a reference photo. And I just thought they were all so interesting and the colors were interesting to play off of. So these aren't obviously the exact colors from the photo, but they're similar. So it's, I really enjoyed pulling color palettes from um, a reference photo. And then here, I'm, um, I've always wanted to draw laundry. And the thing is, that's funny, is this laundry doesn't actually stand out in this photo because the buildings are so colorful. And so um, that's one thing I didn't think worked very well with this um, particular sketch, but um, the exercise was a really good exercise. And here you'll see, I'm trying to create a little bit more distance by not, pencil, uh, not penciling and inking in the um, distant buildings. So another experiment here. And then um, again, playing with more reflections and sky. And this is the back side of the paper. So I feel like it's not as successful because of the way the watercolor works on the paper, but the um, reflections came out okay here. And so um, I'm just playing more with technique and learning how to do that. And then here's a winter scene. I've always wanted to paint like a winter snowy scene and I still haven't actually done um, what I wanted to do yet, but this is kind of um, getting into it. And uh, I really like this reference photo because of the color of the sky. It was like a pink sky. Um, I don't know how well it'll come through in video, but um, I really like this color palette. And then um, back to doors. So I've always wanted to find a good door that was like, looked Greek, like in Greece. I've never been to Greece, but um, you'll see here, I started playing a little bit more with shadows that were on the wall in this photo and on the door. It's really subtle when you look at the reference photos, but it's something that I intentionally pulled out and made um, more apparent in the painting. And then here's one that another door um, that I found interesting because of the stonework around this window and then the color of the wall was really interesting too. And then again, um, I'm playing more with showing the shadows and like the rays of, like you can see there's like a sun, um, the sunlight is, is um, going across the door like this. All right, and the last two. So this one is inspired by um, a friend I follow on Instagram and she is a homesteader. And um, this is their chicken coop in the middle of a forest in a photo from her Instagram. And so um, I was inspired to paint it because of all of the different trees in the background and then the grasses in the foreground. So again, playing with not inking in the background. Um, I just inked in two trees and then filled the rest in with the watercolor. And then this last one is actually supposed to be a pumpkin patch and I've never really seen one before but in the photo it's just orange and green and lots of, they're not even in rows, they're just kind of growing all over the place and I thought that was interesting. So I kept this one really loose in the foreground um, and so I don't know if I... I kind of wanted to paint a, a house, like a, not a haunted house, but I'm not into scary things. So I didn't want to do a haunted house. So it ended up being a pumpkin patch. And so um, that's basically how I ended my um, Inktober sketches. And so I hope you enjoyed it. If it got boring, maybe you turned off the sound and, and that's okay. But if you want to go back and watch it and then see a quicker flip through, you can just um, play it at like two times the speed and turn off the sound and then uh, you don't have to listen to me talk. But um, I hope this was interesting. If you enjoyed it, please um, hit subscribe and like this video so that I know I should do more like this the next time I have a whole sketchbook to flip through. Um, and if you did Inktober, uh, let me know in the comments. I would love to uh, check out your work if you posted it to Instagram or anywhere else on the internet. Thanks for watching.